Welcome to Code Corner. This is a video series we do at Mayfield Renewables where we talk about the solar plus storage industries and the codes and standards uh, that relate to them. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about string sizing calculations. Did a previous video where we talked about the considerations, the temperatures, especially around, and the inverters, how we are going to basically collect the data that we need to do these calculations. So we're gonna go through the calculations. I'm gonna show you some, some um, algebra here on the screen. It's not as bad as it really looks. And then we also have a blog where we go through and we actually go through step by step do a, an example system so you can really get to a chance to see it being put to use. So happy to have you, you know, go through this. If you still need a little bit of extra resources on our website, we have that blog so that you can read through that and, and hopefully get this really solid for you. So we're going to, as I mentioned in the last video, we need to look at two voltages for our strings and we need to look at the minimum voltage and we need to look at the maximum voltage. So as it relates to code, code really cares about the maximum voltage, which we'll show you next. This calculation here is focused on the minimum voltage. And so it's important for us as designers, engineers, installers to make sure that our array is, has a high enough voltage so that the inverters stay on and producing the power that they're supposed to. So that's a really important thing. So let's go through each of these. And again, the, I, when you look at this, I think it looks a little bit more scary than it actually is. Really what we're trying to do is come up with a value, a, uh, a value at which, in this case, the minimum string length that the voltage is gonna drop because of high temperatures. So let's look at the individual components so you can get better acquainted with what each one of these components is. So first off, we have the VMP minimum. And so that's gonna be the answer that we're ultimately after. So looking at this at a module level, we will go through the calculation and find out what individual modules, what their reduced voltage will be in this case, and then we'll apply it to figure out how many modules do we need in that series to keep our voltage up high enough. The VMP is straight off the module spec sheet. So whatever they tell you, the standard test condition value is for the maximum power voltage, that's the value you're gonna use here. That's what we're adjusting. So they tell us at 25 degrees C, this module is gonna produce this number of volts. Well, we know in the middle of summer, the modules are gonna be greater than 25 degrees C, so we need to account for that. And that's what we're ultimately adjusting. Uh, that value is what we're gonna adjust. That T high, so now we're inside the parentheses. So we have three temperatures there that we're gonna use. So the T high, that is the high temperature. That's that ASHRAE 2% value that I recommend that you use from the previous video. And so that would be that whatever the locations ASHRAE 2% value would be, that would be what you would put in here. If you choose to use the record high or something like that, that's the value that you'd put in there. Always in degrees C and again, recommend that 2% value. This T add is really um, something that is a, is a best practice for you to do. And it's an adder for the array based on how it's mounted. You can imagine a PV array, say a residential roof, where it's really close to the roof surface. It's only an inch or two off, or maybe a few inches off of the roof surface, as opposed to an array that's down on the ground with you know, free air flowing behind it. They're, actually, they're gonna operate at different temperatures just based on where we've installed them. So our recommendation, and what I've done for many, many years, is if you have a PV array that's parallel to the roof surface, so there's, it's a flush mount array, I'm using 35 degrees C to use it for that T adder value. If you are a rack style mount, but you're still up on a roof, and so you have, say, more than six inches of space between the back of the module and the roof, then adding 30 degrees C, and if it's a ground mount array or a pole mounted array, adding 25 degrees C. All we're doing is giving a little bit of a boost to that ambient temperature because the modules are sitting in sun, they're gonna get hotter than ambient, and we're just accounting for that with this adder. So that's how we're using, what we're doing there. TSTC, so that standard test condition value, always gonna be 25 degrees C. That's just straight across the board, so that value, it's not even a variable, it's always 25 degrees C. And then this temp coefficient for VMP. This will be a value on the spec sheet 
and it will be very often listed as the coefficient of power. And that's exactly what we're concerned with here. So it's, the, it's a voltage calculation we're doing, but it's at the maximum power value. So go look at your module spec sheet. It'll give you a value saying a certain percent per degree C, and that's gonna be what, how you are going to, um, that's gonna be the reduction of voltage per degree C. All in all, what you're gonna come up with in that bracket from the, where you see the bracket sign with the one plus and then the temperature in the middle multiplied by the coefficient, that value inside those square brackets, that will be something less than one because we are, again, that temperature has an inverse relationship with the voltage. And so we're having a temperature greater than standard test conditions. So our voltage is gonna drop. So inside those square brackets, you should come up with the result something less than one. And then you multiply that by the VMP and it'll tell you what your um, reduction is for your PV module. And then the next step is to figure out, well, how much, how much, excuse me, how many modules do I need in order to keep my voltage high enough? So this is back from that last, the first video. If we go find that V minimum of the inverter. And so you're gonna find out what is the minimum um, voltage that the inverter needs to remain operating. You divide that by the minimum value of the module that you just calculated back in the previous step. And so that will tell you your module string size by putting the two of those together. So if you have you know, 550 volts divided by a number, it's gonna return 12.3, let's say. If you re you're gonna get a value that's you know something less, it's not a whole number, what you're gonna do is you're going to round up to the next size because if you went down, your voltage would be less than what the, the 12 mod, in that case, if you went down to 12 modules, it would say your voltage would be less than what the inverse minimum is. So you would round up to 13 in that case and be able to find out that would be your minimum string size. On the flip side would be figuring out the maximum string size. So again, this is where code is really concern and this is a calculation you absolutely have to do for code um, and being able to make sure that your system is, is code compliant. So module VOC max, again, that's what we're solving for. We're figuring out how much, what is the new voltage based on the temperature that I'm exposing my module to. Open circuit voltage, that's the value straight from the data sheet. So again, at, st at standard test conditions, they'll tell you what the open circuit voltage is and we're going to adjust from that. The T low is a value, this is the ASHRAE ex lowest expected temperature or the record low temperature, whichever you choose. I recommend the ASHRAE expected temperature, but that's a choice that you can make. Um, so this will be the lowest expected temperature for the site. And notice this one compared to the previous one where we were doing the maximum power adjustment, there's no adder here. And the reason for that is the idea is the sun comes up, breaks over the horizon. It's not actually hitting the array. The array is not actually getting heated up by anything. So it doesn't matter if it's on a rooftop, on a ground mount or anything like that. The module temperature is, gonna, is going to be the ambient temperature. So there's no adder in that case that we have to apply for this one. I know that's always a, a point that adds a little confusion for folks. Again, STC is that 25 degrees C. And then there is a separate coefficient for open circuit voltage. So look at your data sheet and make sure that you're looking at them closely because there will be two coefficients, one for open circuit voltage, one for maximum power. You wanna make sure you apply them differently because they are slightly different. Then just like with the previous one, you are going to take the maximum voltage for the inverter. If it's a rooftop inverter, it might be 600 volts. If it's a residential, 1000 volts. If it's a commercial, and you will divide that by that value you just calculated, the adjusted open circuit value. And so the module open circuit, um, that's what we just solved for in the previous um, slide. And then again, that minimum value, or excuse me, the maximum allowable voltage on the inverter data sheet that will return you some number that is the most number of modules you can put in a series string, not exceed the voltage. And you're gonna have to do some rounding again because it's probably not gonna be a whole number. So again, if you do that math and it comes out to 16.3, 
then in this case you are going to round down because if you went to 17 then your 17 times your adjusted voltage would exceed the inverter's capacity 16 times that value would be less than what it is so round down in this case and in the previous one you would have rounded up so Again, take a look at the blog. I would go through an example. I think the numbers were really helpful, but hopefully this at least gets you comfortable with all of those concepts and, and what has to happen. All right, so this is you know very much in line with the courses that we offer. So I would highly encourage you if this is content that is helpful for you, we have a full, in this case, nine hour course on the 2023 National Electrical Code. This fits squarely into you know what that is. We have other courses available as well, but I encourage you to go take a look on our website and see if one of those courses might be helpful for you. And then finally, if you have any questions or comments, always love to hear from people. If you want to give us some feedback on this or if there's some questions, or even if you want to make a suggestion for a future Code Corner, we'd love to hear from you. So feel free to reach out and you know, hopefully talk to you soon.